Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having an amazing weekend. I know this week has been pretty stressful for us here at the channel. We had to actually do battle with actual Nazis in, in the Discord, not the Discord, the, the Mastodon server this week, and it was not fun. Anyway, I hope that your week has been a good one. And if you like chickens and you like the chicken and garden update that we do, and you like seeing how we're growing things, go ahead and watch that if you haven't yet. It's already just posted this morning and you'll get to see our brand new greenhouse, which is incredible. I never thought I would own a 10 foot by 20 foot greenhouse, but I do. My wife is away. amazing. She made it for me and I'm very lucky. And we're now growing lots of cucumbers and tomatoes and other cool things there. But that's not what I want to talk to you about today. What I want to talk to you about today is the steps that you are going through to try and make your home more energy efficient. I live in quite a big house. It's like 2,000 square feet. And yes, that 2,000 square foot house is also the studio for Transport Evolved, the server room, the edit suite. So my business takes up about a third of the entire house, which is mind-blowing thinking about it but we use a lot of energy right we've got servers that run all the time we've got um, all of the the high powered lighting that you need for for obviously filming we've got the edit suite that takes up a, a fair amount of energy although hopefully when we switch to apple silicon it will make it less energy uh hungry but then we've got the cars. We both have electric cars. Michael is here every day. He needs to charge up his car. When we have press cars, they have to be charged up as well. And while we have solar panels and we, we go through steps to try and make sure our home is energy efficient, there's always more that we can do. So in the last 12 months, for example, we have added a water jacket to our hot water tank to try and keep it cool. It didn't have one when we bought the house. And when we were working on it earlier this year, we were like, why doesn't it have a hot water jacket? So we just put one on. We also bought one of those Aquanta hot water, intelligent hot water controllers. And instead of working off a timer or a thermostat, so the timer obviously it heats up the water between these hours every day, no matter what, or a, a thermostat based system, which heats up to a certain temperature and then tries to maintain that temperature. The Aquanta system, which ties in with our, our home automation system, learns when we use hot water and learns the differences between our weekend patterns and our weekday patterns. And it tries to predictively heat up water just as you are about to use it, which is obviously a lot more energy efficient. And there is a noticeable difference on our electricity bill from that. But also, you know, putting in things like more efficient uh, taps and faucets and, and flush mechanisms for the toilets, making sure that our showers are nice and, and efficient when it comes to the amount of water that they use, but also um, the, the, they don't kind of just use all the hot water. Uh, that's really important for us as well, because our hot water tank is kind of small and it is possible to drain it quite quickly. So again, that's a measure that we've taken. But the, the reason I'm standing in front of the garage door, just as the sun is going down on the longest day of the year, is that this is my wife's woodworking shop. It used to be our garage. It's now, it's now full of woodworking gear and it, and it gets larger amounts of woodworking gear in it every time uh, I show it to you. We've now got a, a shop fox, which my wife's got to figure out how to wire in because we're worried about the power requirements of that in the shop. Anyway. This, this year, before it gets cold, and you know we've only got half a year to think about this, we're gonna insulate this garage because it's an unfinished garage. It's kind of common in North America to have the house itself as finished. It's, you know, every room in the house has got nice you know, plastered walls and, and everything is nice and, and there's insulation in the attic and maybe sometimes even insulation under the house to try and help you know, retain as much heat as possible in the winter and to expel as much of the outside heat in the summer so it doesn't come into the house and heat the house up. Um, and the garage doesn't have any of that. The garage is just literally the exterior walls and the structural uprights that make the garage. And that means if you're working in the garage in the summer, it's, it's kind of hot. And if you're working in the garage in the winter, it's kind of cold. And so we are hoping to insulate it for the winter so that my wife can carry on doing her woodworking projects in the winter. Obviously in the summertime when it's nice outside, you wanna be outside, but in the winter, 
it's nice to be able to go into the shop and not have that shop super, super cold. So that's something we're going to be doing to try and, and make our home more energy efficient. Because I can tell you, last winter, when my wife Kate was trying to make uh, presents for family and friends, we burnt through a lot of electricity because we were heating this garage with a resistive heater, like a bar heater, basically. And that was kind of, uh, kind of expensive. I should point out, by the way, if you're watching this, Yes, my wife is, is also a Kate, but I'm married to a different Kate to the one you sometimes see on camera on this channel. So Kate Walton Elliott, who is my friend, who is also British, we are not married. I am married to a different person who is called Kate, who is an American. We call her American Kate. I, I bring that up sometimes when I mention Kate, not kind of to do anything other than to just make sure that people understand that there are two, two Kates in this company. There's more Kates, but let's not go there. Anyway, um, I would love to know how you are preparing your house to be more energy efficient. Because obviously, if you use less energy, you save money. And right now, I think everybody's feeling a, a bit of a pinch. Everyone's feeling a little bit strapped for cash. So taking steps to make sure that your home is properly insulated, especially if you live in Europe in an old house. Um, over here, you know, houses that are 20 years old are considered, oh, that's, the house is getting on a bit. Uh, but in the UK, it's quite common to, to live in a house that's two or 300 years old. Um, and so those houses were built without the concept of insulation. And sometimes it can be challenging to put them in. I know the house my mum lives in, which is what, 100 and, 160, 170 years old. Uh, getting that insulated was a, was a bit of a challenge. Um, and she couldn't get a heat pump put in. She had to have a, a, a more efficient oil furnace put in to replace her previous uh, coal burning or it was yeah it was a coal burning um, stove or, or heating system for the winter she couldn't get a heat pump in because the house was just so leaky um, that it wouldn't have saved her any money so I would love to know how you are making your home more energy efficient how you're lowering your cooling bills in the summer how you're lowering your heating bills in the winter, how you're trying to utilize water saving techniques, uh, whether that is water butts on the side of the house, which again is something that we are going to try and do soon, or whether that is just choosing smart, efficient appliances for your home, being smart about turning things off. I'd love to know all of that in the comments below. And on that note, we are done with today's video. If you would like more, please make sure that you follow the links below. You can also support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. And if you have comments, you can leave them below in the comment section. You can reach out to us on Discord. You can reach out to us in the Patreon, uh, on the Patreon channel there if you are a Patreon supporter. Or you can, uh, you can reach out to us on Mastodon and be nicer than those horrible mean people who were... Uh, yeah, let's not go there. Anyway... Scrolling on my right is the list of amazing Charged Up supporters and shout outs go out to our V2G Patreon supporters. They are Pedro Mora Pinheiro, Alan Tupper, Andrew Martin, Bennett Elder, Brophy Wolf, Chris Maxwell, Cyprian Laplace, Dan Blair, Gordon C, Hey Asker, John Tramal, Kyle Fox, Mark Eggleton, Peter Dillinger, Regine Fellows, Sean Tucker, Stefan Fremgen, Stephen Williams, Tazlet in the Gong, Paul Bricknell, Tony Moss, Kyle Hodgson, Chris Asentar, Denny Hyde, Lance Schlal, Linda Irish, Mike Weeder and Paul Nelson. And... Finally, um, big thanks to our off-grid supporters. They are Paul Conway, Kevin Burbridge, Stephen O'Donoghue, Jim Burness, Robert Flannery, Aaron Hahn, Ellery Hensley, Rory Litwin, JP Fagerbeck, Dave Kitchen, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, Chris and Michael Johnson, Clay Witt, CPU Freak 101, Eric Neck, Joe Bresney, Joe Hughes, John Henderson, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Nigel S, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and of course, Ian. Don't forget that we make content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday on this channel. No, on the main channel, indeed. Uh, and you can watch that a day earlier if you are a Patreon supporter or YouTube channel member. And then over here, which is Transport Evolve Take 2, you'll find our Sunday musing like this one, which is hopefully more coherent than today's. And our chicken and garden update, which is always fun if you like chickens and gardens. And some of you do, some of you don't. And that's totally OK, whichever way you go on that one. Anyway, whatever you enjoy next, I hope the rest of your weekend is a good, peaceful and awesome one. And until next time, keep evolving.